Hey, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, your favorite medical channel. We continue our biochemistry playlist. Please watch these videos in order. So we have talked about thiamine for a long time. Today is the final video. This is a quick review about vitamin B1. Vitamins are essential, which means your body cannot make them. Therefore, you have to eat them in the diet. Before the year 1935, the only way to introduce vitamin was through the diet. But after that, now we have supplements. It's good to have options. Where did the name vitamins come from? They are vital amines, but this is not true. Organic molecules, micronutrients, and they are essential. As you know, two types, water-soluble and fat-soluble. The functions are many, including a cofactor for enzymes, such as today's topic, which is vitamin B1, a cofactor for the hydrogenases. There are no solutions in life. There are trade-offs. Too little vitamins, you get vitamin deficiency. Too much vitamins, you get hypervitaminosis. Both are bad. Of course, from chemistry, you know the difference between polar and nonpolar. We have compared between water soluble and fat soluble vitamins before. Vitamin B1 is a water soluble vitamin, that's why deficiency is more common than the fat soluble counterparts. It's easier for you to get beriberi than for you to get nectalopia. It's easier for you to get scurvy than to get vitamin E deficiency. And we have talked about fat absorption before. There are no shortcuts to any place worth going. What are antivitamins? They are chemical compounds that inhibit vitamin absorption, such as avidin, pyrethamine, and cholestyramine. B1 is thiamine, B2 is riboflavin, B3 is niacin. What about B4? Doesn't exist. Shut up. B5 is pantothenic acid, B6 is pyridoxin, B7 is biotin, B9 is folate, B12 is cobalamin. Thiamine deficiency can happen to you if you only eat white rice and white bread that are deficient in thiamine if they are not fortified. If they are fortified or enriched, you'll be okay. As a vitamin, thiamine is a cofactor for many enzymes, especially the dehydrogenases such as the pyruvate dehydrogenase, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase, transketolase, etc. Here is glycolysis, then pyruvate becomes acetyl-CoA normally, thanks to pyruvate dehydrogenase, if you have vitamin B1 as a cofactor. But if you are deficient in vitamin B1, pyruvate dehydrogenase is not going to work, pyruvate is not going to become acetyl-CoA, instead pyruvate will go to the ugly path of lactic acid, which will lead to lactic acidosis, which is a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Pyruvate dehydrogenase requires five cofactors, and the mnemonic is Teflon Company. Here is the second enzyme, alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. It's part of Krebs cycle or tricarboxylic acid cycle. If you have vitamin B1 deficiency, alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase will not work. You will not be able to produce ATP. Here is the entire biochemistry in a nutshell. Here is your burger. The burger contains three things. Carbohydrate, and then it contains the meat, like Arby's. We have the meat! And then the cheese is the freaking fat. When you eat carbohydrate, glucose becomes pyruvate, pyruvate dehydrogenase into acetyl-CoA, Krebs cycle, energy, thank you so much, amazing. If you eat proteins, they become amino acids, and then branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase into acetyl-CoA, Krebs cycle, ATP, thank you. If you eat the cheese, you get free fatty acids and ketones, free fatty acids by beta oxidation become acetyl-CoA, Krebs cycle, ATP, yahoo! Proteins, amino acid, leucine, branch chain, alpha keto acid dehydrogenase into whatever, and then acyl coa Krebs cycle, thank you so much. This enzyme requires vitamin B1 as a cofactor. The HMP shunt, you get the glucose. Normally, it should go into glycolysis, but for some reason, we shunt it into the HMP shunt. This is the transketolase, requires thiamine as a cofactor. Here is the enzyme. Here is what happens when you have deficiency of that enzyme. Some tips. Thiamine is important for decarboxylation, which is the same thing as dehydrogenase enzyme. Vitamin B1 is a cofactor for transketolase. That's why you can test for thiamine deficiency by measuring the RBC transketolase activity. When you have vitamin B1 deficiency, bad things can happen, such as the Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, thiamine metabolism, dysfunction syndromes, and beriberi. What is Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome? Basically, it's Wernicke's encephalopathy plus Korsakoff syndrome. This is not a problem in area 22 that was Wernicke's aphasia. So I'm sorry about that stupid mistake. Wernicke-Korsakoff. Let's start with Korsakoff. Korsakoff affects your mammillary body. When you damage your mammillary body, you get amnesia or memory loss. Damage to the mammillary body or the medial dorsal nucleus of the thalamus or the anterior group of thalamic nuclei, the part of the limbic system, you get seven major symptoms. Amnesia and confabulation are the two most important ones. 
There are seven causes of vitamin B1 deficiency. One and two are the most important. How to diagnose freaking Korsakoff syndrome clinically? There is no need for lab or imaging. If you want to be sophisticated, you can see the lesions in the mouth. Why would you do that? You can just give thiamine and the patient will improve. Because we live in a world with scarce resources which have alternative uses. Also, what did Hippocrates tell you? Do no harm. How do you treat Korsakoff syndrome? IV thiamine. If the patient is alcoholic, he might need hydration and nutrition, including glucose. But if there is acute mental status change, it's an emergency. Remember your ABCs. Here is everything about Korsakoff syndrome. What are the causes? What are the symptoms? Diagnosis and treatment. Wernicke Korsakoff. We're done with Korsakoff. Let's talk about Wernicke. We mean Wernicke's encephalopathy, not Wernicke's aphasia. Wernicke's encephalopathy or Wernicke's disease is thiamine deficiency, happens in alcoholics or patients who are malnourished. It's a triad of ophthalmoplegia, ataxia, and global confusion. Wernicke plus Korsakoff is Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome. What most people do not understand is that Wernicke is an acute condition, but Korsakoff is a chronic condition. Wernicke is the ophthalmoplegia, ataxia, and global confusion. Korsakoff is the freaking amnesia with confabulation. And here is everything you need to know about Wernicke's encephalopathy. We have discussed that before. Please note that the nystagmus here is horizontal, not to be confused with vertical nystagmus that's seen with pineoloma or any pineal tumor. I said pineal, not penile. Get your head out of your helmet. Wernicke Korsakoff is a triad of ophthalmoplegia, ataxia, and confusion. Okay, let's say you have a patient came to the emergency department and you suspect that the patient is alcoholic. What should you do? For any acute mental status change of unknown etiology, Narcan, dextrose, thiamine for you and me. Okay, great. Should I give the thiamine first or the glucose first? Always start with the thiamine. It's a terrible mistake to start with glucose. Stop it. Hey, medicosis, why do you say it's a terrible idea to give glucose before thiamine? Okay, let's say that you give glucose before the thiamine, which is stupid, but let's go with that. You give glucose, it becomes pyruvate. Pyruvate should become acetyl-CoA, but the patient has thiamine deficiency. This pathway is blocked. The pyruvate will go to lactic acid. You gave the glucose first, you did not get the thiamine, so this is what will happen. Lactic acidosis, high anion gap metabolic acidosis, any freaking acidosis inhibits the neurotransmission. The patient will end up with ophthalmoplegia because the muscles, nerves and muscles of the eye cannot move, ataxia and confusion. This is Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome. Good job, you stupid doctor. Please start with the thiamine. This is not rocket science. Repetition is the mother of pedagogy. Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome, ataxia, ophthalmoplegia, confusion. How do you treat it? Easy. Thiamine first, and then you hydrate and give nutrients such as glucose, and give Narcan if you suspect heroin. Give thiamine before glucose, please. Now we're done with Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome. Let's talk about thiamine metabolism dysfunction syndromes. Two very rare yet ugly diseases. The first one is thiamine responsive megaloblastic anemia. The second one is thiamine metabolism dysfunction syndrome type 2, also known as biotin thiamine responsive basal ganglia disease. The good news is that they are responsive to treatment. And we have discussed that before. Biotin thiamine responsive basal ganglia disease. This is the second disease. Genetic autosomal recessive, 3 to 10 years. SLC19A3 gene. That's a good move in chess. Defective thiamine transporter will lead to episodic encephalopathy, basal ganglia disease, and others. By encephalopathy, I mean seizure, ataxia, dystonia, facial palsy, etc. Treatment, give thiamine and biotin for life. We are done with Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome, thiamine metabolism dysfunction syndromes. Let's talk about the third one, Berry Berry. It all started in Japan when Dr. Takaki Kanahiro discovered that sailors who ate only white rice developed symptoms of a mysterious disease that he called Berry Berry or Kake because his name was Takake. I've just told you that the most common cause of thiamine deficiency is eating white rice. We are done with Wernicke Korsakoff and thiamine metabolism dysfunction syndrome and we are here. Beriberi is either infantile or adult. Adult is wet, dry or gastrointestinal beriberi. Infantile, the baby is 2-3 months old. Infants who are breastfed if mommy is thiamine deficient because like mother, like son. Symptoms, cardiomegaly, tachycardia, cyanosis, etc. Many children can develop intellectual disability or chronic epilepsy if the doctor is so stupid and could not treat it early. What's the treatment? Thiamine. 
If you want to become a better doctor, there is an antibiotics course on my website. And we have talked about this sad story before. And here are all the symptoms of infantile beriberi in one amazing slide. Now you are an expert on infantile beriberi, let's turn our attention to adult beriberi. Adult beriberi is dry, wet, and gastrointestinal dry. Neuropathy, why? Due to demyelination, the neuropathy is symmetrical, distal, sensory, and motor. You can get muscle wasting as well. The wet, you get dilated cardiomyopathy with cardiomegaly. The cardiac muscle lacks ATB. Biventricular failure, CHF. On the right side, it will lead to edema. On the left side, it will lead to dyspnea and cardiogenic pulmonary edema. There is tachycardia, high output cardiac failure, Everything is fast, everything is dilated, everything is distended, including the jugular veins. I might die someday, but this slide will remain forever. Thiamine deficiency, everything in the world in one slide. What's the most common cause of deficiency? Eating white, non-refined rice. Alcoholism is the second one. Thiamine is water soluble. Thiamine is a cofactor for the dehydrogenase enzymes. If you lack thiamine, you get wernicke korsakoff syndrome, which is a triad of thermoplegia, ataxia, and confusion. Don't forget the mammillary body and the amnesia. Thiamine metabolism dysfunction syndromes include thiamine responsive megaloblastic anemia, biotin thiamine responsive basal ganglia disease. Beriberi is either infantile or adult. Adult is wet, dry, or gastrointestinal. You diagnose thiamine deficiency by low levels of vitamin B1, high levels of lactic acid called lactic acidosis, decrease red blood cell transketolase activity. You treat it by giving thiamine. If the patient has acute mental status change of unknown etiology, Narcan, dextrose, thiamine for you and me, but thiamine before the glucose. Here's a stupid mnemonic used by many students, beriberi B1 deficiency. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button to join the tribe. You can follow me on all of these platforms. Please help me by supporting the channel on Patreon or PayPal. Go to my website to get the antibiotics course, the electrolytes course and my notes that I drew for these videos. Thank you so, so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense.